grass I think how do you feel about that I'm good with grass I haven't fished up here in grass or fast water yeah I'm gonna well grass that's kind of I catch fish in the fast water but our biggest ones this late summer have been in really fast water right below ledges like that oh yeah just the super super fast water usually early in the day real early in the morning yep well, we can work our way over there too like i said we'll just fish around and put a pattern together all right figure it out let them i'm on the susquehanna river with life outdoors unlimited guide joe raymond Good morning guys yeah. all those all the i've caught a lot of fish up to 21 inches in the past month and over 21 inches i caught one that was 21 and three quarters i think a month ago and I've weighed a couple of them and none of them are going over five. Yeah. Some of them are thick too. I mean, some of the them are. Last, the big one I got last weekend was four, 14. Two, it, that's it, a, and that's a chunk. Yeah, he was a chunk. It's, it, it's, it's funny, uh, a lot of my clients and different people I talk to about this river, they think it's just loaded up with five and six pounders. And I, I have clients book trips saying they want to come out and catch five pounders. and. I don't know if it's just me. I, I feel like I'm catching the fish that are up there. I'm just not seeing the five pounders that these other guys are seeing, but I don't know. Maybe we'll catch one today. I get one or two a year. Yeah, one or two a year. That, that's that's what I, it was funny actually last year, one of my clients, he wanted to catch a five pounder and I pretty much gave him the same spiel. I've caught like one or two so far this year. Hopefully we catch a four. Well, he ended up catching on my boga grip, a five, a, it was right at five. It was 20 and a half. I didn't even know what to say. I guess it's just one of them jinx things. It was cool though. He was happy. Just got on the uh, first fish of the day. It looks like a pretty hardy fish. Oh. He was just on, Joe, if you turn around and show this little disturbance behind us. week at sort of secondary ledge. He warned a net. Let's you want just, some net? Let's just do this. But yeah, that sort of secondary ledge. It's not a real dominant feature out here. You have dominant ledges up above, but that one, he was just on the upstream side. And that sort of, you know, laminar flow right above it. Decent Susquehanna bass on a spinner bait. It probably would have hit anything. It just happened to be a spinner bait. Chunky fish. I just throw in a pocket and bring it back through and it's it's like you're fishing your crankbait real 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 pause and that skirt flares up and down you can see it makes a swirl almost like the bass when they swirl on it it's on a smaller scale a 
lot of times they'll come up and swirl it. The same time I uh, pause it. Show me the spinner bait you got there. Is that one you make? Yeah, this is one I made myself. Um, it's just a small profile, double willow leaf. Uh, I don't know, kind of like a screaming eagle style. Is it the best? I don't know. I made it myself. So I like catching fish on it. Yeah. So you just pour the lead with the do it mold? Yeah, poured the lead with the do it mold. Um, I got one of the cavities where you can pour four different sizes. It seems uh, three eighths have been working the best for me. I tried pouring a couple quarters, but they roll funny. The do it mold's working out really well for me. I haven't had any problems with it. I watched a few videos on YouTube to kind of educate myself on lead pouring before I did it, and that was really helpful. That's not I, a normal. Uh, is that a titanium? Uh, it's a different kind of wire. It's a, it's a titanium blended wire. Huh. And they hold up better? I don't know if they hold up better. It's it's something different. It's something I'm just kind of messing around with. It, it it will last longer than a stainless wire, but I've, I've broken them. It seems if I come out and fish for I don't know, three or four days in a row and consistently catch good fish on the same spinner bait, it will pop. And what's different about this kind of wire is um, you can't really tell when it's going to go. Like a, a stainless steel wire, you can feel it, it's getting flimsy and you know you're about to pop your wire. These things, they just, you never know. It just all of a sudden pops. But Joe. Three or four days on this river. <laughs> Three or four days. Yeah, I, I would say 50%. They'll last 50% longer. That other one swirled like it was like 19 or 20s. That's like a 14. Sweet. I don't know. A 15 inch fish. Probably a two pounder or something like that. They're all fun. Giant fish. Nice fish. Little bump and grind. That's all right. I want to pinch him. That's real common. We get them, catch them on the chin with this. With that crankbait. Joe and I were talking about the secondary. You have one exposed ledge rock up there. Let me get him back in. And then back from it a little bit, there's a second disturbance, and they will sit right on the upswing of that second. I mean, you have them stacked. Current coming in, deflected off of, of this, creates a, a, an eddy. It starts pinching off at the end, but you're still in that calm water, and then they'll, it's almost like they got a backrest. They just sit back and look upstream at whatever's coming next. So, you know, that combination current break and then another current break right below the, the primary one. Got another one on here. And it hit just the way we were talking about. I cast out there and I almost worked the spinner bait like a buzz bait where as soon as it hits the water, I'm reeling, so the blades fire up right away, and I gave it about two or three cranks, and this fish was on it. I think it's just a reaction. Oh. I think it's just a reaction. That bait hits the water and goes flying past the fish's head, and they want to kill it. Whatever it is, they, whatever they think it is, they want to kill it. It's not a huge fish, but hey, it's a fish, and we don't discriminate out here. It's not just clients, but sometimes I see clients. Uh, I have clients that want to book a spinnerbait trip, and they'll get out here, and they're good fishermen, um, but they're not used to the power fishing with bait casters and um, doing what you got to do to fish these things right. The first thing you're going to need to do it right is a casting reel. With a this is a faster retrieve. I think this is a seven four. You want to be able to work the bait back uh, pretty fast. This is a Shimano reel. Um, 
The rod is a 6.8 medium heavy powered fast action. It's like a bottom contact rod, like a jig and worm rod. It's not a spinnerbait specific rod. You don't, to work spinnerbaits, you don't need to get a spinnerbait specific rod. You just want to get something that it's a medium heavy power and fast action. Um, I actually don't fish any spinnerbait specific rods, like a rod that says spinnerbait rod. Um, most of them are extra fast tapers and I person I don't know if it's perfect but this is what works for me this is what what I would call bottom contact rod like a jig and worm rod um, but one of the things I see guys do wrong is they'll come out here with this uh, spinning setup and they'll cast out and that bait hits the water and it sinks to the bottom and they flip the bail shut and then they just slowly start bringing it back in and it's it's too late uh if you're gonna that bait needs to be fired up the blades need to be fired up as soon as it hits the water like a buzz bait um you don't want it to sink down you just there's another one it's not a very big fish but it is a fish we would like to have this fish's mama come out and do that on film Oop. but uh, I, I I think it's a reaction thing as soon as that bait hits the water you want it to be flying past their head and they just come up and nail it um, a lot of times you'll have them swirl on it you'll feel a little bit of a tap but no hookup and I don't think the fish is always hitting the bait with their mouth open I, I think sometimes they'll come up and hit it like like a porpoise or like f flipper or whatever would 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 uh, hit something trying to wound it they'll just come up and poof, push it out of their way you want them to hit it with their mouth open you want to you want to be able to hook up with them but hey every day is different and every situation is different you got one i got one Ooh, i don't think it's real long but it's got some weight to it come here mr fish might go 18. Pretty. Got it in the mouth. Now they've been bumping him without taking him. Yeah, he he swatted at it a couple times and then finally came up and ate it. I think they test it. They say, what, are you, what is that? What yeah, is that? it's like a kid. You tell him not to stick his finger in the electrical socket and he keeps going tss, 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 until he finally gets zapped and it was just... <laughs> the same way with this fish. He wanted to see how many times he could swat at it. Now we saw him up at the, the head of this this uh, grass bed here. There he goes. Eating minnows. Chasing something around. Yeah, right up in there. Right on the the upstream side of this. And the fish is still up there. You don't think that was the one that, that you just caught? No? There's still something up there. I caught that, that fish came off of a riffle up here. I, I uh, ripped the spinnerbait over, oh, well, it's a ledge, it's a submerged ledge. I ripped it over the ledge, paused it, and the fish came out and swirled on it. And then I, I uh, pulsed the skirt on the spinnerbait a couple more times and he went back and forth on it. And then I finally got a hook on him, so in him. You were saying earlier about how a lot of your clients, before you were able to teach them, they'll swing on those those boils yeah the first as soon as they see something i mean it's real visual when you're working a spinnerbait up on top you're burning it across you see the wake off the spinnerbait and all of a sudden and your first reaction is to pull back but a lot of times the fish doesn't the fish might not have even touched the bait it just came up and looked at it and swirled and it'll go back down to the bottom and then turn around and look at it again and come up and whale it i don't know what they do i'd love to put a camera on one's back and see what they see but go put it, a fish cam <laughs> it happens a lot where guys they it's visual you see that swirl you see a, you see a fish come up out of the water and you pull back before it even the fish even touches the bait so you gotta wait you gotta you gotta wait for the weight it's like a buzz bait um uh, or anything else you crank and i didn't know if i had that fish on i i felt it swat at it a couple times i didn't want to pull back and pull the bait away from it so I tried to catch up and I felt a little bit of weight so then I pulled back on it. I was lucky I actually got a hook in it. 
see if we can get that big one to go. So we've had a couple good misses of a fish with us, uh, mostly with spinner baits. And now I said, all right, I, I think I can finesse this fish, this big one that we were missing earlier. not the giant but he's he's a nice fish yeah absolutely and but it shows when you have fish came right out come up and swat at a a moving bait going back in with and i just got it's a dragon head and a and a confidence baits what's it and letting it sit in there he's not the only one let's let's get the big one Ooh, quick release. Quick release. He's a good one. right in the corner. I love it when they, they arc, they just carve and they... Try and get away from you. You know they're nice when they, they just have that long, solid path. Mm-hmm. Definitely better. He's just wide. Yeah, it's got shoulders on it. Yep. And that's just letting a soft plastic dead stick on that that current seam right over there. Not really doing anything with it. It's, it's like you, you set a trap and uh, he fell for it, fatty. Back to the crankbait. We were catching a lot of them on the swim bait there for a while. Went back to the crankbait and immediately big fish. Crankbait seems, at least for me this summer, is catching a lot of a lot of nice ones. Alright. Nice 19 incher on a crankbait on isolated boulder in the middle of a pretty much a gravel glide here. So we'll go ahead and get her back in.